Welcome back to Homo Studio. This is the Photo P playlist, and what we're going to do in this video is work with lasso selections. We'll be selecting pixels freehand using a magnetic lasso and even adding and deleting from our selections, but we're going to use the lasso tools. We're not going to get into any masking yet, which we will eventually, but we'll start this way. So let's look at a finished product just to see what we're going to do. This is the finished product of the two dogs, and I kind of did something with this in the earlier video where I took away the yellow color cast, and what we're going to do is blur the background and kind of desaturate the background a little bit to make these guys stand out. Now what that's going to require is making a selection around the dogs first in order to select the opposite, which is select inverse, is everything in the background, and then we'll make some adjustments to the background. So that's what we're going to do, so I could even keep this open right now. Now I'll start right from the beginning by going to Google Photos, this is the image we used last time. I'll use it again. I'll just copy it. We don't have to download the super high res image that would be over here because that would download the ATIC and then we have to open it in preview and copy the pixels. So we'll just copy the image. So I'll go here, copy the image and I'll go to Photopea and I'll go file new and it's going to use the settings that I just copied and I'll hit create and I'll paste it and I used Command V or you can use Control V to paste it and I'll go on my move tool and I'll just make it bigger I'm not gonna make the image bigger I'm gonna make the layer bigger because you can see down here it's layer one so I'm just gonna make the layer bigger in the area and you don't have to hold shift matter of fact you hold shift in order to distort it not to keep it constrained which I guess that's helpful and I'll make these guys a little bit bigger here I'll move them up kind of fill up the screen like I did in the other video so I won't take a lot of time doing this that's a nice picture of the dogs and I'll hit enter because I'm done scaling and you could also hit the check mark that was right there and you could turn the transform controls off and what I'm gonna do to layer one is I'm gonna take the yellow color cast off by going to image adjustments and then photo filter if you remember doing that in the other video and choosing the orange color making it blue and hitting OK and then putting the amount of blue photo filter down to maybe somewhere around 20, something like that. You can look at before and after. You just want to take off the yellow. Maybe I'll even take off a little bit more because it's getting a little blue there. And I'll hit OK. So that's good to start. You can still move it around without having to hit enter. So if you want to move them around a little bit. Now we're going to blur all this background kind of stuff here, but we have to select the dogs. So before I do that, I'm going to double click here and change the name and I'll just call it Dog's Kitchen and I'll just call it Start because I'm starting it. And I have a couple Photoshop files called Dog Kitchen, so I'll just call it Start for now and I'll hit OK. And then I'll also save it because right now it's not saved to my computer. I'm kind of working online. So I'm going to go File, Save as PSD and I'll just save it on my desktop. That's where I've been saving other ones when I record the video. So Dog's Kitchen Start PSD on my desktop. All right, I want to select these two dogs. Now there's different ways you can do it and I'm not going to go into masking right now. I'm going to go into the lasso tools. Under the lasso tool over here, if you hold down, there's lasso, which is just a freehand lasso. There's polygonal, which is like using the pen tool. You could kind of click and make straight line segments. Sometimes it's easier because it's easier to control, but then it's not as smooth because there's a lot of kind of you know, round kind of areas here. So you'd have to make a lot of points. There's also the magnetic lasso, which we're going to use where it kind of lays a selection onto areas where it finds high contrast. So it'll look for dogs that are kind of, you know, he's dark on a white background. They'll look for edges. And you can also work with these tools. Now, if you've worked in Photoshop, you might've used the quick selection tool where you can actually click on something and go in here and kind of click on a color. Now, I haven't had good luck with it at all in here. I use it all the time in Photoshop, but for some reason, I'll use Command-D to deselect that. I haven't had good selections with that. They also have this object selection where you can kind of go around an object. That's been a little better, but you still have to add to it. You could go around an object, and you could see it did go around pretty good. If I zoom in here, you can see it's making a selection around the dog. Still not great. I'm still going to have to do a lot of editing to that selection. So I, I don't like either of these methods, and maybe it's just I don't know how to use them that well in Photo P. I, I use them fine in Photoshop, the quick selection. I use it all the time. And I'm certainly not going to use the magic wand. So I'm going to go back here and try out the magnetic lasso. And before I do anything, I'll do Command-D and get rid of any selections. 
And if you're wondering where I got Command D, that's under Select. Deselect is Command D. And if you're on Windows, you could do Control D. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. I'll do Command Plus. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of lay, I'll just kind of drag and just kind of click. And once you click one point, you can kind of move along and it should lay kind of a selection on. It's hard to see here. Like if I go out here, you can see it's kind of out there. So I'll move down. And now that's going to make an extra selection because I followed that line. But that's okay. We could change that. And I'll keep following the dog. I don't know if you could see it doing that. I'm just following the edge of his back as I go down. Now you can click and make points as you go, especially if you get into an area where it's going to have a hard time uh, deciphering the difference. You might want to manually kind of click lines when you do that and kind of override. Or it might try and go around the the carpet and things like that. So I'm going to go all the way over here and it, I'm not that worried about the bottom. Now I'm going to start going up here and I might click a couple times to go around here and kind of override the magnet. Now you can see it's what it's following here a little bit now. And it, you know it, it may take away things I don't want but I could fix that. And it's doing an okay job here. I don't use this a lot and I'll go around his mouth. Luckily there's a lot of nice contrast there and again if it's not working just click and I think you can also freehand go around as well. We'll kind of override what it's trying to do with that magnetic feature. So I'll go around I'll kind of try and freehand it around his ear and if it's not perfect that's okay. I'll go down here follow his back follow the back down. Now there's some areas by the sneaker where it's gonna get fixed. Even down here there's some light and dark areas so I'm just gonna kinda click so it doesn't go into that other area. Now I'm gonna keep them together so I'll just turn around here and go back up and I think I can just kind of draw manually through this area and you can see it's picking up some other stuff so if it does just stop and then click manually just kind of click and go through here and then I should be able to just lay it down. Now, I'm not I'm not drawing I'm just kinda of moving my mouse and the trackpad and going back and when you get to the beginning just click and now you have a selection and you can see it's selecting the two dogs. Now it's not perfect but it's a selection and what you can do to change that selection or to add or subtract which we did in the other videos was going back no longer using this magnetic lasso. I'm going to go here and use the lasso, the freehand and zoom into some areas and just kind of fix some areas. Now I still have the selection so be careful if you click once with this lasso this might go away and I'll show you how to save the selection as well. Now remember these options up here you can unite which adds to a selection or you could subtract which deletes from a selection so this is not going around his ear there so I want to fix that so I'm going to use unite and I'm just going to start in the inside and just kind of draw around his ear and then kind of go around so I'm kind of selecting an area that I want to add just like over here it's missing his mouth so I'm going to start inside the selection kind of go outside the selection and then kind of go back in again and just kind of circle around. You don't have to get back to the beginning. And here it missed some over here. So I'm just adding or uniting to the selection. And I'll go down and I guess I'll add this because it doesn't look like it's supposed to go in as much there. There's just some shadow. It's missing a little here. Not that it's a big deal, but I can add some down here. In here it's cutting away from his leg a little bit. So I'll fix that. Here we want to deselect from that. We want to subtract. So you could go here to subtract and highlight stuff or draw a little area that you don't want. I don't want that selected. So that kind of eliminates that. Even this little, there's a little bump here. I could kind of eliminate that. Now I'm getting kind of picky. Now here's a little bump on the rug because there's a color in the rug that matches his back. And I'll go around that. So I'm still on the subtract right now. And it even picked up some, some of this sneaker here. So I'll subtract from that. I'll just kind of freehand draw down and go around and I missed a little more and again you can use a mask to do this but I'm just showing you how to start this way because either way when you make a mask sometimes you'll start with a selection like this and then you'll be able to modify it with a mask with a paintbrush here's a little area behind his head I'll use the subtract and get rid of that because I didn't want that but his head looks okay I think I have everything there uh, I'll pick up a little on his mouth and if you do the wrong thing, I didn't mean to do that, so let me just do Command-Z. And I'll go back and do Unite. And this time I'll add and get his mouth there just a little bit. Just add a little to his mouth and circle around. And just kind of go down his back and see how it looks. And if it's not perfect, it's okay. There it's picking up 
this looks a little little off here so I'm gonna subtract some stuff from here and I'll go around and I'll just do little bits at a time you don't have to draw a whole bunch at one time just do little bits and circle around and I guess that that looks to be part of him there I didn't realize it was but there's part of him down there maybe it's this tail I'll, I'll get that and circle that so I think I have everything here's a little bit here on the bottom not that that's gonna matter a whole lot but I'll get that so I'll zoom out a little bit I'll do command minus so I have these guys selected so I want to select them first and then we'll select the opposite to get the background now one thing I just want to point out you did all this work to do that if you just click once with one of these tools this could go away and then you just wasted all that time you'd have to start over but what you could do is you could go to select and you can choose save selection now you might say well where did it go well it saves it as a channel it saves it as an alpha channel so just for example if I went here and I went to select deselect and it's gone oh no it's gone how do I get it back I could go here to alpha and actually if you command click or control click if you're on Windows right on the icon if you command click right here it'll activate the selection again now in Photoshop they have an option where you could go select load selection but I haven't found it in here in photo P unless I'm missing it but that's what you can do in Photoshop as well you command click right on this and it'll activate the selection now that we have that selection what are we gonna do with it and another thing I just want to point out this is kind of an extra thing but I made a real kind of harsh selection when I when I use this tool I had no feathering it uses anti-alias which kind of makes a little bit of softness it just it takes away from being stair-stepped you know really edgy but it, it's not a soft edge and I didn't feather it at all and what you could do is you could go on here you could click on this thing and I'll do command D again and you can actually go on the alpha channel now it, it's hard sometimes you go over here and you're like how do I get on that you have to turn off the RGB and then just leave the alpha on and what I'm gonna do here and I'll zoom in a little bit is I'm actually just gonna do a blur I'll just blur that edge slightly so it's not so harsh so I'm on my alpha this is in the channels tab maybe you've never used this but we'll use it it's not that hard we'll go to filter and we'll go down to blur right there and we'll use Gaussian blur because we have an amount and it's at 7.2 I'm gonna put it down to maybe like one or two just a little bit not point one but maybe like one pixel just to soften it slightly you can maybe go two at the most that'll soften that edge a little bit just so it's not so harsh and cut out looking and you could kind of do before and after it's not doing a lot so but I wanted to soften it just a little bit so I'll hit OK now if I want my RGB back I could click there now you might be saying well I don't want this red in the background well then you could go and turn it off here in channels so that's just showing the alpha channel when everything's on but then you could turn it off and then go back to layers now what am I gonna do now well I'll go back to channels and I'll command click on this and activate that selection and I'll go to layers and I don't want these guys selected but I did select them I want to select everything but them so that's where you go to select inverse and now that selects the whole background now what we're gonna do is we're gonna blur the background just like we blurred our alpha channel we can go to filter and go down to blur and we'll do Gaussian blur and again we're just gonna blur it so that it kind of minimizes the background it makes these guys stand out and the background is like less important so I'll increase the blur here you can blur it a lot so everything very unrecognizable or you could just kind of blur it slightly but I'm gonna blur it a lot we don't need to see the oven and the garbage and all that we want to see the dogs you want it to look like they're still in an environment so I'm gonna do that now the way we're doing it we're just doing a once and done so we're not doing this so we could go back and edit the blur and edit anything else we're just showing you a once and done and I'll hit OK and also why the background is still selected meaning everything but the dogs will go to image adjustments and I'll just go to hue saturation because we can desaturate it a little bit and make it even less colorful saturation takes away the intensity of the color so if we kind of turn this down it makes it more black and white in the background and that's what we'll do we don't have to take away all the color make it completely black and white but we'll just take it away so it's a little desaturated so that's a good way to kind of do an adjustment of some desaturation not completely but just a little bit and there's other stuff you could do you could adjust the hue of the background a little bit but I don't 
want to do that too much right now. We could always use photo filter to do that if we want as well. And I'll hit OK. And that's it. So I'll do Command D and I'll deselect that. And that's what we did. Now we could always bring that selection up again, but we kind of did this in kind of a, a once and done kind of way. If we work with channels where you can actually paint a selection and work that way, you know, you have a little more flexibility and it's not quite permanent. But as a permanent kind of solution, these lasso tools, the one we used first was the magnetic lasso tool, and that's the one that kind of laid on areas of high contrast. And then we went back and used the freehand one, and we used these kind of modifiers up here, but to unite, which is really adding. You're adding to a selection, and subtract, where you're subtracting from a selection. And you do that by just kind of drawing little shapes that either go into the selection or go out of the selection. And you might go into the selection to take it away, but always kind of draw like a like almost a closed shape in a way. If you've ever used those Boolean operations or Pathfinders and Illustrator, that's kind of how they work as you're doing the selection. And remember, Command D makes the selection go away. And if you ever need the selection again, if you did select Save Selection, which we did when it's active, you can go here and command click on this. I'll turn off the eyeball right now. And then you could always bring the selection up again. And what's nice is by saving it, we were able to blur it and you could modify it more. So if you needed to, you know, actually paint on it, we, you could put that red background and actually kind of paint on it. And that gets more into what a mask is like, which we'll actually do with masks when it's time to do that, because you can actually turn this into a layer mask. They call it a raster mask, but you can actually turn a selection into a mask as well. So that's kind of what we did when we saved selection with Alpha 1 here. But that's all I wanted to show you, just how to use some of these selection tools and how to modify them as you work and how to change the background of an image just to kind of de-emphasize the background and make these guys stand out. And we also did that yellow color cast in a previous video, so I won't mention anything else about that. So that's our dog's kitchen. I might want to do a file save here. And again, if you'd want to save a JPEG, you could just go File, Export as, JPEG. And I'll change the name. I'll, I'll put Blur, just so I know I have a Blur background or something. And it'll be Dog's Kitchen Blur, and I'll put it up to 80%. And remember, when you save it from here, it'll save it into your downloads. So there it is. If I double clicked on it, it'll open up in preview. But I could still go here and look at my downloads. And there it is, Dog's Kitchen Blur. So there's the image. If I double click on it, it'll open up in preview. There it is. Pretty cool. So just wanted to show you that. That's some selection tools, along with some blurring and some other things and some an alpha channel that I wasn't planning on really going into, but we'll do more with channels and masks at some point. But that was really just to show our selections and show how to select something from the foreground and change the background when they're on the same layer. So thanks for watching. <laughs>